And welcome back to the second segment of our show this morning. We're shifting gears. Uh, we're going into a conversation uh, with Eric Sanchez. He's a project coordinator for the International Organization for Migration. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having Good me. Good morning. Let's just start off by finding out more about what the IOM does. Hi. Good morning. Um, so the IOM, which stands for the International Organization for Migration, mm -hmm. is the UN migration agency within Belize and mm -hmm. has been within Belize for some years. Mm -hmm. And even though we have implemented many, many projects within the country, some projects of note would include the MIDAS projects, which stands for the migra which stands for Migration Information Data Analysis System, mm -hmm. which is a border management system. Essentially what that does is that it captures entry and exit into and out of the country. So you know, every time you go to the, to the border, mm -hmm. you, um, you have a photo taken of you. That's a project that we have done. Another project that we did is a developing migration and developing policy for Belize, developing migration and development policy for Belize, which is an ongoing project. And some of these projects are funded by IOM funds, some of them by external funds, for instance, the US government, which funded the, um, the Midas project. And you have various different projects. However, for right now, the project that we're focusing on is, car is called uh, Developing and Sustaining Peace Through the Sensitization of Media, which is a project being funded mm -hmm. by the Canadian government or CFLI. Mm -hmm. What's the scope of this particular project? Essentially, the scope of this project is to look at the way we present information as media personnel on topics concerning migration. Mm -hmm. So the, what type of language do we use? The way we present our information in respect to, to how, how we want the audience to feel. You know, because media has a very powerful role in terms of scoping the idea, the scoping the feeling of how a particular issue can be held within the country or within mm -hmm. any, any realm for that matter. And so this project essentially looks at ensuring that the media has a very clear and accurate way of presenting information mm -hmm. on regards to migration, getting those proper terminologies done, mm -hmm. getting those factual accounts done and everything like that. When you talk about the presence of IOM in Belize, I think, you know, uh, we need to perhaps be clear on what uh, the migrant, what is, what is, who is considered a migrant in Belize and what the IOM does directly in working with them. So with regards, for instance, for this particular project, I'm the consultant for this project itself. Okay. And so when it comes to, to the IOM specifically, okay. I, can, I can see with very limited information to myself, is that when it comes to any issues facing migration, IOM has a concern with it, yeah. but cannot act on the issue of migration without the government permission, mm -hmm. yeah. considering we're a UN entity. However, we do have a very strong relationship yeah. with the government of Belize, and we do our very best to try, our, to try and ensure that whatever mm -hmm. issues come up with regards to migration and is, a, and is within our scope, we can tackle that particular issue. This is a very interesting time. The topic of migration is global. Mm -hmm. From all the uh, conversation coming out of the US with the wall, to it's Canada it's opening it's up their borders, yeah. to what's happening on the other side of the world. And it seems to be that uh, there is a very divided view on whether or not a country should open themselves up to having uh, migrants come in. Where, 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 how do you explain to people um, why it's important to have an agency that looks after the rights of migrants? I think with that, with that question, I think it's very important to, to look at what is the mission of okay. IOM. Mm -hmm. And the mission is that in an orderly manner and in a humane condition, my sorry, in an orderly manner and in a humane condition, Migration can be beneficial to both the migrant and society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when people look at the, the, the issue of migration, yeah. it's always a, a, a negative persona. However, who can be a migrant? I can be a migrant. You can be a migrant. If someone moves from PG to Belize, they are considered a migrant. If mm -hmm. you take the bus in the morning and go to Belmopan, you're a migrant. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be crossing a border, but mm -hmm. migration is the fact of moving. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, it becomes essential. You kind of scope it down to where it, where it matters. And this is where this project in itself becomes important, mm -hmm. especially looking at the global outreach in terms of what the world is looking at for migration. And Belize has been a country that has taken the, the, yeah. the realm, the helm in a lot of different projects. We are the first for a lot of things. Yeah. And when it comes to migration, let us be the first in properly reporting yeah. on migration. And so this project, specifically this project, focuses on getting media personnel Mm -hmm. communications officers into the room and let's talk about how is it that we can shape yes. our view 
and our country's isn't government. shaping that view part of well isn't part of shaping that view sorry being able to do away with the stigma that you're saying you you think of migrant and you think of all these other things that come along with it in a negative perspective mm -hmm. is this part of reshaping how we look at the concept of persons who either travel across borders or persons who travel within borders i think that yes and no mm -hmm. yes it has to do with reshaping the view mm -hmm. and no because as a media our role is not to necessarily shape views mm -hmm. but to present facts mm -hmm. and when it comes to presenting facts that is more where this project is focused on mm -hmm. let us identify maybe areas of weakness mm -hmm. for instance you know the term illegal immigrant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. someone can never be an illegal immigrant they could come into the country irregularly Mm -hmm. And then they're considered an irregular migrant, but not an illegal migrant. Mm -hmm. And so these are the, the terminologies. But how do you separate the two? Because isn't, uh, for example, refugee, which is also uh, uh, part of the group that's handled by IOM, uh, they have to seek that status with the. Indeed. So there's illegal and there's legally having that status. So refugees in itself, um, just a point of clarification, yeah. refugees, mm -hmm. we, are, we don't specifically focus on IOM. Mm -hmm. The UNHCR mm -hmm. focuses on refugees. Yeah. But of course, again, you look at how we present that information, mm -hmm. whether it's a refugee, it's an asylum seeker, mm -hmm. or it's a migrant. Mm -hmm. And migrant has many different categories. You can be a stock migrant, like the Mennonite people are stock migrants, mm -hmm. right? You could be an economic migrant, for instance, somebody coming from the CARICOM countries, or we leave into a CARICOM countries and economic migrant, or as, as, as most of us have an aunt or an uncle in the US who yeah. is an economic migrant, mm -hmm. or a student migrant. You know, mm -hmm. so it's again, it's just how we as media present the information in regards to yeah. migration, how we how we look at what are the effects, mm -hmm. the, both the positive effect mm -hmm. of our presentation and the negative effect of our presentation. Do mm -hmm. we create a clear and objective image that is non-emotional, non-biased, mm -hmm. but just purely facts? Now, Eric, uh, you know, part of what you're talking about, I think, is is very clear in the wider society more so than in the media, um, that if you talk to an everyday citizen, their perception of who a migrant is and perhaps the connotation that they give to a person who's a migrant, it, it's more a cultural issue than it is a level of awareness. Mm -hmm. What's being done to be able to kind of do that grassroots movement? In other words, if you want to sensitize people on on the rights or on the perceptions that they have. It really is a community-based issue as well. Are you also working on the ground? I think that when we look at, at, at the community level, the grassroots level, mm -hmm. the approach that we took <coughs> for this mm -hmm. particular project, and this is just the first in, mm -hmm. in line of how oh. we disseminate information towards um, the public. And there's no better way to start than with the media. Mm. Because the media has the biggest influence on the culture of a particular country, a particular group of persons, as long as they are consistently exposed to that media. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are doing different projects. Um, you look at the policy development project, you mm -hmm. look at the Western Hemisphere projects, you look at the Midas project mm -hmm. that looks at ensuring that it's not just, you know, okay, let us focus on the media, but let us focus on the media, let us focus on the policy development, mm -hmm. and let us focus on how we reach those grassroots individual persons and what type of dissemination information we did. And we just found that the media is the most appropriate way to look at it's it. It's the right vehicle. Case. Yeah. What do you feel is the greatest misconception or misunderstanding that people have about the migrant population? I, I think that the biggest misconception or the biggest, the biggest error in feeling that we have with regards to migration or migration population is that migrants are a negative aspect of mm. our population mm -hmm. or that migrant can be a bad thing mm -hmm. but in reality a migrant is not necessarily a bad thing you know of course in every bunch of people you have you have the one or two persons that may not be the best candidate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but migration in itself can be beneficial if properly organized if properly channeled mm -hmm. if properly policed and it it can help grow our economy what do you think lends to that perception again Looking at, uh, for instance, if you, if, you, um, if you look at what the world says towards migration, you know, migration was not a hot topic 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was not a hot topic two, three years ago. It's just becoming recently with, with the different things happening in the world where migration the is more fleeing, prevalent yeah. mm -hmm. within Belize. And the way Belize is, is conditioned is hev almost heavily by the, 
by the North American media. Mm -hmm. And the North American media views of migration is, is up to the populace to decide whether that is good or bad. You know, and I think that is, for us, one of the things that is open it. However, this is where a project like this becomes essential. Yeah. How do we ensure that our media counteract that portfolio? You know, if, if, if Channel 5 is presenting a very good presentation, a very good piece on migration, mm -hmm. the, the, the public might be more skewed towards what we have domestic mm -hmm. as opposed to what we are importing. Mm -hmm. Now, so you spoke of the North American influence, and that's interesting because you know, I, I can recall having conversations, perhaps here on the shore, perhaps off air, where, and again, I go back to it because I think, yes, the media has a good reach, but there are sometimes things that I really think has to happen at a grassroots level, and this is one where it has to be happening in both places. Let me give you a very clear example. Of course. A person who's a migrant from North America, what, would you, what do we call them? We call them an expat. Mm -hmm. A person who comes from Central America, what do we call them? A migrant. We call them alien. alien. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And agreed, the media should not and perhaps mm -hmm. can move away from that type mm -hmm. of language, but it comes from the community. That's our perceptions that we have, that a North American doesn't qualify as an alien, which does mm -hmm. have very derogatory meaning behind it, mm -hmm. um, or migrant, but it's common day language. I've never heard a North American or Caucasian person being referred to as a migrant or alien. So it seems that there's a wider education that has to take place, yes, definitely involving the media, but beyond that, because that's a, that's a level, we can call it many isms, <laughs> but I won't go there. So um, giving you the opportunity, because this does allow for other people to see it as well, what do you say to people about how we need to check our own thoughts and our own words when we interact with people coming from a different country? I think that that information is, is, is power and information becomes key. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, that we develop ourselves should be on a factual basis. Mm -hmm. I think that, that we must not be misled by what is out there, mm -hmm. but do our research for ourselves. I think that when it comes towards the terminology that is used mm -hmm. to, to identify or to classify a particular group of individuals can be negative in some areas, mm -hmm. and in some areas it can be it can be more positive to a particular group of persons, mm -hmm. right? However, you used to also talk about, about the grassroots effect, yeah. you know? But in, in different media outlets, again, mm -hmm. you know, when, when we're presenting information mm -hmm. on these same said comparisons, mm -hmm. we as media sometimes tend to use those very same terminologies mm -hmm. to identify these individuals. And mm -hmm. in some way, we have a little bit of responsibility mm -hmm. in how our grassroots or our cultural language is, is kind of spoken. Mm. And because of that, I do feel that a, a training like this, which is the first of its, of its kind in Belize, mm -hmm. becomes essential. It not just let us start with one place, because you know, yeah. to start a race, you have to start on one foot. Mm -hmm. And this is the first way. Yes, of course, there are many, many different <coughs> things that <coughs> has to be done. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that are in the works to be done. Mm -hmm. but. For this particular project concerning I'm only the project coordinator for this particular yeah. project, I do feel that this is the, a very, very good first start for Belize in terms of migration mm -hmm. and in terms of helping us to, to get that conversation started in the proper way. What would you say is the ultimate goal of your sensitization sessions with communication workers in the country? I think that the ultimate goal with regards to the session for communications officers and the media mm -hmm. is let us see our own personal look at what it is that we have been doing as media. Mm -hmm. Let us identify our strengths. Mm -hmm. Let us identify our weaknesses mm -hmm. individually as media. And we as IUM are going to provide that platform mm -hmm. that would allow you to say, hey, you know what, well, maybe I could have reported a little bit better on this, or man, I did an exceptional job mm -hmm. in this particular report. It's essentially to provide a type of training so that we can, we can self-evaluate ourselves mm -hmm. and evaluate others. And then we say, hey, you know, Marlene, you know, Isani, you know, somebody else, let's, let's may maybe instead of using the word illegal, remember I got on a training mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I say, okay, I really mm -hmm. use, you're not supposed yeah. to really use Im illegal, you're supposed yeah. to use irregular. So moving to more politically correct, correct language. language. Precisely. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not just being more politically correct, it's being 
socially accurate. Mm -hmm. It's being being able to to create that conversation that mm -hmm. is not screwing up some type of negative emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, like 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 instead of calling something a caravan, why don't we just call them the Central American migrants? You know, mm -hmm. let's not create a negative perception. If the word caravan is being used as a negative perception, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's getting the things that are that are generally basic. Okay, and so who is your target? Where all are you reaching out to? Indeed, thank you. Um, the, target, the scope of this project in terms of target is mm -hmm. look at the northern region, mm -hmm. the central region, the western region, and the southern region. Mm -hmm. So far, we've done a training in Orange Walk. We've done a training this weekend in, uh, some, in Belmopan. Belmopan. And this coming Saturday, we're having a training right across the street at the Whitfield Towers okay. at 9 o'clock until 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you, the conversations that are being held at these trainings the past two weeks have been just completely mind-blowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're not looking at it only on a, okay, this is IOM's perception of it. Mm -hmm. No, we have a technical consultant that did mm -hmm. a number of research into this particular topic. You have legal experts mm -hmm. that come in and talk to us about the, the, the legal issues mm -hmm. when presenting um, migration. For instance, when you look at asylum seekers and refugees and those mm -hmm. type of statistics, you have those being presented. So when we go out, after as media personnel, we have a very, very strong basket mm -hmm. that we can pull the information from and that we can say, hey, man, there's a topic about migration happening in the southern part of Belize. You mm -hmm. know what? I'm going to give Ayoma a quick call just to, just to ensure that this is here. Mm -hmm. Or I have done this type of training. And what's been the interest so far? I think that the interest has been very good. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, this weekend we had a number of persons there. And we're looking at having a greater number in Belize City because Belize City is really the realm of, of information dissemination across mm -hmm. the country. But once there, man, the participants are, are super involved. Yeah. They are they have that, that, that sense of man, I, I did not know that was happening in this country. Yeah. Like I, I didn't realize that when I call somebody an expat versus an alien versus an illegal immigrant versus a, a migrant, mm -hmm. that it has such a profound impact mm -hmm. yeah. on them. I didn't realize that that maybe I could have written that better. Maybe as a communications officer, I could have I could have said I could have mm -hmm. said something about it. Or maybe even the populace, okay. we could have done something about it. So it's, it's one of those trainings that that you leave full. Okay. You leave full of information and full of, of drive. And if someone is interested in signing up, how do they get in touch? If someone is interested in signing up, they could always contact us at the office at two two three nine five zero zero or at six zero four eleven seventy five. And remember, the training is looking at media personnel and mm -hmm. communications officer. However, if you as an individual has, for instance, you're a freelance writer mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. you have an interest in being a part of a training, of course, it is not limited to anybody. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you just simply want to come in and have the conversation with us, it's there. And um, we're going to be focusing on training and, and preparing um, a package so that the media personnel and communications officers can have a, a greater pool of resources to mm -hmm. pull from. But it's a very good conversation and everything. And you have an opportunity to win a great amount of cash prize. Okay. Cool. <coughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming in and sharing with us the work that you're undertaking. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take that final break. And when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up. So stay tuned. <laughs>